Happy Monday, friends. Uh, Tanja here with a very special guest who I'm going to introduce shortly. Uh, it's Mindset Mastery Monday time. It is Monday the 18th of November. You know how it works. I usually jump on here and share some stuff to help you get access to living a life and growing a business that you love. Now, this beautiful soul next to me. Hi, everyone joining in. We've got Emily in the house. I feel like Romper Bomper. Kate Ashton's in the house. Oh, Coach Claudia, how are you? Brooklyn's here. Who have you got here? I've got Abby's here. I'm not sure who else is there, but hi. Oh, okay. So thanks for tuning in. So my guest here is a friend of mine that I've known for 15 years. She was saying, just her saying hi to her friends on Facebook and mm -hmm. on Instagram and then Lael's Instagram over here. She is a birth educator and counsellor. Good morning, Kylie Charlton. She is has 15 years experience as an, a specialist and an expert in uh, birthing sexuality and parenting she also is literally building a school uh which we can talk more about a beautiful primary school woodline primary woodline school primary. in yep. uh, 20 acres in geelong hinterland and it's built on emotional connection uh, which I, yeah, I can't wait to hear more about that. She's also just been asked to join the Resilience Project as the parenting expert, which is going to be amazing. It's going to be a big year for her. And she's also a mum of three, so she is practising what she preaches. Uh, her name is Lael Stone, and she's with us for Mindset Mastery Monday to talk about how do we grow great businesses, particularly in real estate, but I know a lot of you are not in real estate, without the parenting guilt. Lael, good morning and welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. So here's the reason why I wanted Lael to come on. I know a lot of my clients and also just from uh, people I speak with and all the women uh, that are mothers in real women in real estate navigate this terrain of grow, wanting to fulfill their careers and grow a successful business mm -hmm. and earn really good money to provide for their family, mm -hmm. but also navigate that parenting guilt. So if you are watching this now and you experience that, can you let us know? Hi, Fiona, great to have you here. Can you let us know? Emily, good morning to you too. Have, if you're a parent, do you sometimes feel guilty of the work that you're doing and the connection that you don't have or the time you don't have with your kids? One of the things that I love that you you preach, Lael, is you work for the kids. Yes, yes, totally. I think in all my work that I've done over the last 15, 16 years through birth, parenting and sexuality, so I work with teens as well, uh, it is about giving, speaking for the children when they can't speak for themselves. So I find that with the whole parenting dynamic, our children are always trying to tell us something, but sometimes we need those messages and we miss those cues so for me I feel like I'm the translator between the kids and the parents <laughs> uh, to help build more connection and more harmony in families because I think that's what we all really really want we yeah. want a family that feels harmonious we don't want to yell as parents we don't want to feel stressed we want our kids to thrive and be the best version of themselves but often we miss a lot of the cues and I think and often we get caught up in our own stuff yeah project that onto our kids and that's where we feel there's the disconnection that happens in the family yeah well said and you know uh, uh, hey, Joanne, great that you're joining us too. We're unpacking how do you have a successful business and not wear the parent guilt. Kylie Charlton, love what you've written here. This is perfect for me. Mother guilt is so hard to deal with, my love. Stick around because we're going to, Lael's going to unpack three simple things that's going to give us all access, including me, to keep growing and achieving our own personal desires of expressing ourselves in the world but having yummy connection with our kids. So my invitation as you are watching this is listen for something for yourself, even if you just get one thing, and please make sure you share this with friends. Mm. So talk us through how do we achieve success in business or particularly real estate without wearing the parenting guilt and cracking that whip because everyone's working hard to provide for their why mm -hmm. but what's the point of working so hard mm -hmm. to build an amazing future mm -hmm. if the present mm -hmm. is tricky and sticky and, mm -hmm. and disconnected and not fun so talk us through your top three points yes yeah. so for me the first thing I'd like to start with is that guilt is it's a feeling that I think as soon as you find out you're pregnant it's an emotion that we take on board which can be you know did I eat well enough in my pregnancy um, you know was my birth you know should my birth have been different you know did I like book my child into swimming lessons soon enough like we we bring these stories becoming a parent immunization yeah everything like we're not doing it 
and right, we're not doing enough. So we've got this whole story of what the perfect, I guess, parent can look like. And there is no perfect parent because I absolutely believe we are all doing the best job we know how. So for me, the first thing is I see guilt as a beautiful barometer and guilt's when we're feeling guilty around the mothering thing. I think it's a bit of a sign that says, am I connected enough with my children? Because guilt is one of those signs that, that kind of helps us feel, oh, maybe I'm not doing it the way it, it should be done or maybe my I'm not providing for my kids in the way that they need emotionally. So I feel like guilt is very much just a sign that says, are we connected enough? So first I use it as a bit of a barometer. And it's for the dads too, oh, not just mummers. <laughs> parents. And then the second thing I like to say to parents is that guilt is an emotion that is pretty insidious and it doesn't serve us. So if you are hitting yourself with the emotional guilt stick, which I think a lot of us do, we beat ourselves up with, I'm not doing it right, I'm not good enough, all those kind of things, then we have to set ourselves a limit and take that stick and put it down and start with compassion. Because for me, I think the most important thing around the parenting journey is that we can be compassionate with ourselves because we are all doing the best job we know how with yeah. the tools that we have, right? Yeah. So we need to start firstly with that compassion piece to say, all right, I'm going to stop beating myself up, but I'm not doing it right. I'm going to have compassion for the journey I'm, I'm on. Because if we don't have that compassion, then what we do is we bring that kind of negative feelings and emotions that we're internalizing often to our relationships. Mm. So we can then project that onto our kids. That creates more disconnection. So it becomes very, very messy with these internal stories that say, I'm not doing it right. So how would a parent that's watching this now know that they're cracking that guilt yeah. trip whip because, you know, I also want to just start by saying I just acknowledge you for joining us on this call, right, mm -hmm. whether, whether you're a regular or you're jumping on because you particularly love the topic and, you know, this piece of knowing, like having a context that you're doing the best you can with what you have and sending yourself love, like there's this whole thing about our definition is decisive. So if mm -hmm. our definition of parenting is like, I've got this thing of a, a great parent bakes, like they bake mm -hmm. and they have the perfect cookies for the school <laughs> things, right? And my kids are teenagers now, but so I, I had pressure on myself, oh, you know, they bake and, you know, they have houses house like, clean, houses you perfect. You iron everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, iron undies too. Yeah. So anyway, hey, Sam, Samuel, thanks for joining in uh, and thanks to everyone joining in on Instagram too. So how do I know if I'm cracking the guilt whip? Well, I think you just, you're feeling bad about yourself. You're feeling bad that I'm missing something with my child or there's that, that's that internal feeling of this doesn't feel good for me. Mm. And, you know, my foundation of, of working as a parent is all about connection because the answer to creating harmony in your home and feeling, you know, how, raising healthy, resilient, happy kids is connection. So when we are not connected, and we'll talk about ways to get connected. When we're not connected, that's often when it, things feel tricky. It's yeah. when we feel there's a rub. We feel like, you know, we're dropping our kids off at school and we feel that feeling of, oh, God, they don't they don't seem happy going to school or, you know, they're having to really kind of suck it up for the day to get on with what they're doing. It's, it's those parts of us where we're feeling that, that kind of sinking feeling in our gut of this doesn't feel right. Mm. And what I love to offer parents is firstly give that, part of you a bit of love and a bit of compassion yes. and go it's tough being a parent it's tough being a parent working it's tough being a parent keeping all the balls in the air it's a really hard time to parent in this day and age so we need to start yeah. with that compassion and not many people are saying hey by the way or calling mm. go hey kylie i just wanted to let you know you're an awesome yes. mum yes. you're doing a bloody great job yeah. Yeah. you are building a successful yeah. business yeah. working really well in your industry mm. and you're providing for your family yes. i just we don't like yeah. i mean we create that yeah. right so for ourselves yeah. but it's a really big missing yeah. of having yeah. that acknowledgement and reflection yes. of you're actually doing a good job so yes. you're saying we've got to do that for ourselves totally because yeah. again I, I love to work on this premise that kids can't be what they can't see so mm. you know we may say one thing but if we're acting out and doing something else then that's what our children are witnessing so when we can start being kind and compassionate to ourselves that's a gift that we then model to our children which is a huge a really important thing for children mm. to see and to know as they navigate the world because the world sometimes isn't kind so yeah we need those inner resources to go yep i can manage whatever's going on so firstly it starts with compassion mm -hmm. for yourself and then i guess the next thing is there's three steps that i love to talk about around how we build more connection
connection because connection is the absolute foundation of building healthy relationships with our children. So the first thing I love to talk about is presence. And I'm sure you talk about this mm. all the time in your work around being present with clients, you know, being present with what you're doing. But being present mm. with your children is just fundamentally key because kids can feel it. You know, if you're sitting there with your child and you're playing trains on the floor, but you're actually thinking about the email you have to send and what you're going to make for dinner in a minute, our kids can actually feel that. Mm. And often they will respond with their behavior. So whenever we're seeing a child who's what I call out of balance, which means they're acting out, they're hitting the Cracking dog, yeah. Yeah, they're punching their sister, all those kind of things, <laughs> there's a sign there that the child's feeling out of balance. Well, they're trying to communicate something. Yes, aren't they? yes. All behavior has a story behind it. So a child's external behavior is a reflection of their internal state. So when um, we are wanting to, I guess, connect with our kids, we're really wanting to make sure that we have presence. Mm. And so that means just when you are with your child, be with your child. Put your phone down if you can. Try and, you know, switch off your head just for a minute of that email to, I'm just going to look at my child with a bit of wonder and joy, mm -hmm. even if it's for 10 minutes. So I have a few little guidelines that I've worked with with my own kids who are all big teenagers and I've run my own businesses for 25 years. So I really do know that that story of mm. when you work for yourself, there's always the things in the back of your mind of, you know, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. So it's not these set hours that yeah. we often do. It's a constant. But what I have found is these beautiful little guidelines. So in the morning and then when I meet my kids again after they've been at kinder or school or wherever it is, for that time in the morning before I go and drop them off, be present. Mm. You know, so don't look at my phone. Don't take phone calls. Just be present with them. You know, even if it's for half an hour of what are you excited about today? Mm. How are you feeling today, honey? just being present with them and then so important when you meet them again at the end of the day because particularly mm. if your kids have been in kinder or school you know that's that's big very stuff. big for a big for a little person you yeah. know they have to be good all day there's a whole lot of feelings that often accrue throughout that day especially in tweens and teens oh. and you add all the yeah. hormones yeah. and then the Topic. pressure of yeah. social media that we're yeah. dealing with yeah. now yeah. heaps of stuff so when we get back together what our kids really need is hey mm. how are you mm. how is your day and feeling that presence with you so my daughter we used to have this Rule that when I pick her up from school, I'm not allowed to be on the phone for at least half an hour, mm. right? And and that means that when I get in the car with her, I am just like, hey, tell me how everything was. Mm. Now she might be like, mm, no, I don't want to talk about my day yet, mm. but I just still be there and be present with her yeah. because she needs to feel that reconnection for yeah. the day. And I have found with so many parents I've worked with, if you can be present with your child, particularly just after school for a good half an hour, mm -hmm. and if you can include some play or connection in there, then often that kind of fills up their cup. Yeah for the rest of the afternoon that they're pretty cruisy and then you can still do some more work if you need to. Dinner time goes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But when we haven't had that reconnection time when we've been separated from each other, things can become really, really messy. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is presence, definitely. Try and be really present with your child when you are actually with them. And we can't fake it because kids know. They are, they are so clever. <laughs> yeah, they are so clever. So that presence is really important. So that may, may mean putting your phone down or just, you know, trying to be really focused on where they are and at. And the gift that that brings too is when we're connected, kids' energy, they're in that, you said the word before, wonder, they're in that childlike state where anything and everything is possible. Yeah. And when we can park our daily to-do list and step into the wonder of the child mm -hmm. or the dynamicness of a tween or a teen, mm -hmm. that can be a gift for us because we're mm -hmm. reconnecting part, with part of ourselves that can then be fuel for when we get back to yes. work because yes. it's a new energy, right? right? Totally, totally. Yeah. So the second tip I would say to really bring that connection, to ease the, the guilt feeling of I'm not doing it enough or I'm not spending enough time with them, is without doubt listening. Listening is my number one parenting tip, right? Because even though we think that we listen, mm. so many of us, when our child, children are feeling, you know, something going on, we move straight into the fixing it. What's wrong? Well, maybe you should do this. You know, how about you try that? Instead of actually just listening. Because mm. for a child, well, for all humans, what we deeply need is to feel heard. Yeah. So when your child is upset, maybe they're upset, you've brought them home from kinder and they're upset because you've given them the wrong coloured cup, which, you know, can happen. And <laughs> usually that's just because it's been a big accumulation of stress over the day. You know, they've come home to you, you're a safe place, you give them the wrong coloured cup and they have a big meltdown, big feelings. What they need in that moment is just, oh, honey, you're upset about the cup. Tell me all about it. And they need to often cry and mm. vent and get out all the feelings that they've been carrying from the day, which can be around all sorts 
sorts of different stuff that's happened. And what they need is that beautiful deep listening from you. Mm. Now that also in primary school can be about your child getting in the car and them saying, you know, they're really upset and you're like, what's going on, honey? And they're like, you know, Jack didn't play with me today. And instead of moving into that, well, maybe you should just play with Charlie instead. Yes, solutions, yeah. We just, ah, tell me about it. That sounds hard. And listen, mm -hmm. listen, listen. Listening is the most underrated tool in your parenting toolkit without yeah. doubt. Yeah, and don't listen to fix, alter or change. Yes. Listen to get their communication yes. and experience. Yes, because here's the thing. As humans, when we feel heard, we can process what's going on and then we can let it go. Yeah. Whereas with children, when they don't feel like they're being heard, then they're going to keep replaying that story again. They're going to move into whinging. They often will move into complaining a lot more because their need isn't being met, which is then physically heard. Yeah, what what is popping up for me, and I'd be curious to know if this is there for you too. Hey, Samuel, Karen, Stephen and Kate, thank you so much for joining in. Kazi also, great to have you here and everyone else that's joined here um, on on uh, Instagram. Uh, what pops up when you talk about presence and that capacity or that space to be able to go, oh, I gave you the wrong coloured cup, mm. talk to me. And tell me if this is true for you. If we don't have some reserve, mm. if we haven't taken the time to fill our own cup, mm. the the kid's reaction of the wrong colour cup can tip, off, tip okay. us over the edge, right, because we got cut off at the supermarket or we didn't get that proposal or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, and you're probably going to talk about some solutions, but it just kind of jumped into my mm. consciousness of, you know, for myself, I know mm. I can get triggered if if I've got nothing to give. Yeah. If I and I know yeah. many of you are watching this are at that point where you're working six, seven days a week. You're in the office at mm -hmm. seven thirty. You get home at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Some have au pairs. Some have nannies. Some are single parents, independent parents, mm -hmm. doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And they don't have mm. those reserves yes. to, hey, tell me all mm. about it, even though you want to, right? So yeah. if that's your experience, I feel you. Mm. I'm sure Lael does too. Don't worry, she's going to mm. give you some stuff yes. around that too because I think that's an yeah. important thing to acknowledge, especially in real estate. Yeah, totally. And I think the thing is what you brought up is a beautiful point that I talk about all the time. When we have a reaction to our child, it is about us. Yeah. It's always about us, right? Yeah. Because, and exactly as you said, that can purely just be because you're tired, you're stressed, you've got a lot of, you know, balls in the air, but sometimes it can also trigger our own stuff from our own childhood. Yeah, know? yeah, or Children, our incompleteness and totally, what we didn't get. Yeah. Mm. Kids are our, our beautiful mirror, and so whenever we are feeling... Um, you know, we're feeling reactive to our children. Usually there's something going on for us. And what we need is some listening time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we need to tell someone about the cup we don't yes. like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm Sarah. Sarah's really joined. Woohoo! Powerhouse women. Hey, Sarah. So I think the thing is our capacity to listen, you know, is usually relevant to our capacity to be heard as well. So yeah. when we have um, feel that we have the opportunity to sometimes have a vent or talk to a listening partner or somebody that can hear us, we create more space to then be able to go back to our kids yeah. and listen as well, which is why we all need support. We 100%. all need it takes support. A village, totally takes a village. So I guess the thing coming back to listening is that, you know, one of the most beautiful tools that you can bring to parenting is the ability to listen and say nothing. Especially, so this is when your kids are having a tantrum or when they're crying. You know, the job is to be what I call the anchor, which is to be calm, to be really spacious and go tell me about it. Because when kids have the opportunity to move through the feelings and emotions, they'll move through it, um, it will resolve and then they'll feel, oh, that feels better, I've, I've moved that stress or all those big feelings that I've had that have been carrying for the day. So, mm. so, and that's the same with teenagers, it's the same with kind of all relationships, we just need to be heard. So in what builds beautiful connection within families or within the parent and child dynamic is our ability to listen. I, I work a lot with teenagers and when um, I talk to teenagers about what is it that you feel look different in the home, or what do you wish looked different with your parents? They always come back to saying, I wish they listened more. And I say, tell me more about that. And they say, well, when I try and tell them something that's going on, they I feel like they judge me or they try and fix what's happening or they get really scared about what I'm saying. And what I really need is just somebody to sit there and say, that sounds really hard. Mm. What do you think you should do? And not offer me any solutions yeah. at all. Yeah, hundred you percent. Know? And you know, I feel because that those teen years are really big and important. Yeah, the learning to listen starts when our kids are little, and it's never too late to start. But if you can start when your children are little, 
building that beautiful listening relationship, by the time they do get to those teen years, they will trust you to bring mm. those big stories to you. So listening is a really important tool to start. And it's human nature to want to fix, resolve, alter, repair, take care of. It's just mm. it's just a human desire that we have. Uh, but the great, like, you know, as they say, this moment is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Mm. I truly believe that if we park the desire to fix, and that comes from a great place, mm. but it is secondary, mm. people just want to be heard. They just want to be gotten. They want to. They want their world. Like, I, I someone gets my world. Yes. Okay, and we can take an out breath and soften the belly and go. Right. Mm. Do you want a snack? Mm. <laughs> Before yeah. we go into solution, yeah, 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 totally. Or I usually say. Tell me all about it. And then I find one of my best lines is, and what else? Like, right. So leaving it open, and what else? And then once they've finished, then just say, would you like any suggestions or do you want me to have just listened? And then they'll tell you, I just wanted you to listen. And then you, yeah. and then you say nothing, which is really hard. Yeah. But you say nothing because you've done your beautiful job in just bringing that listening to them because that yeah. is healing for most kids. And that goes back to your point before of building connection because mm. if we are just focused on the outcome and focused on fixing the problem, which we mm. think is admirable and mm. noble, mm but that's not what they want. Yeah. That's disconnection, even though we're trying, we think yes. we're doing it. But if yes. we remove that need and just, as yeah. Lyle said, be present, mm -hmm. tell me all about it, anything else, is there yeah. anything more you want to share? Yeah. Do you want some solutions or yeah. do you want yeah. some space or yeah. do you want just to be heard? That, that's absolutely going to build connection because yeah. they're like, oh, wow, yes. Yes. there's nothing to do. I can just be yes. with all that now. And I often say to this, you think about as an adult when you're feeling stressed, when you've got emotions going on, when you have a cry or when you speak about what's going on, when you have somebody listening to you going, I hear you, mm. that's hard, and they're not offering anything to you, then you feel hurt. But if they start, you know, jumping into it, well, you could try contacting this person, yeah. you could do this, could do that, well, it's like, you're not mm. getting it. No. And we shut down. So yeah. kids are exactly the same. So listening, super important. So my third tip really is about something that we call special time or present time. And this is like magic balm for relationships. So mm -hmm. this is about spending one-on-one -on -one time with your child. Now, this is particularly for those of you that are working lots and really, really busy. This can be 15 minutes in your day. It can be half an hour in your day. And the whole idea about special time is connecting with your child and doing something that they want to do, okay? And it is about being 100% present for that special time. Now, there's a few rules that we apply around special time, and the rules are set a timer for special time. And the reason why we say set a timer is because a lot of us, when we think, oh, I've got to go play with my kids, we'll often do it kind of reluctantly because we're mm. like, oh, I've still got to do all this, 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 and this. And you're like, oh, how am I going to play for? And we kind of are there kind of half-hearted and mm. we're looking for an out a lot of the time, right? Whereas if we set a timer, say for 20 minutes, we know for 20 minutes we just have to play trains for 20 minutes, right? <laughs> or we just have to play Minecraft for 20 minutes. Or we're just going to listen to this music for 20 minutes. And that, I guess, gives us a boundary that we go, I can actually do 20 minutes, mm. right? So that's, it can be 10 minutes, it can be 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever feels good for you. But the whole idea is to say to your child, I'm going to spend special time with you. What do you want to do for that time? Yeah. Now, if your kid wants to jump on the trampoline in your undies and you feel good with that, then do that, <laughs> right? Yeah. I want to do um, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're allowed to say no to what they want to do. But the whole idea is about filling up their cup with your presence, right? Yeah. So I, and I say to families all the time, use the term special time say hey we're going to have special time and you know at 5 30 today we're going to have special time think about what you want to do for that special time and they're never too old for that too never like teenagers my yeah, yeah. I, yeah. We, I have special yeah. time present yeah. time mum yeah. and daughter time yeah yeah absolutely you can't call it special time to teenagers no they roll their eyes yes, and they just like special time <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> but for little kids they absolutely love it and i think it's really good to bring in the languaging around it because especially you could say when you drop them off in the morning hey let's have special time when we get back together today what do you want to do now this is also really important for dads you know if, mm. if you are working more and not necessarily doing those transitions of pickups and stuff like that you know even when you get home from work you know put your stuff down get changed and then half an hour of special time and and I often say one of the best things you can do with your kids is doing something called rumbling um, which is about wrestling on the bed pillow fights power reversal games where your kids get to be stronger than you the whole idea of this is about laughter and connection because laughter builds connection it's really good for us as adults to do yeah, that. Yeah, to play. Enough. 
you know, it helps us drop kind of the oh, heaviness of the day, builds beautiful connection. You often end up with touching and snuggling and all that kind of yeah. stuff. That is what fuels connection. Mm. So I guess my, my guidelines around special time is call it special time, ask your kids what they want to do, and remember that the rule is that you're doing what they want to do. And it's just for that timeline too. So once you set that timer on your phone and the timer goes off, then you can have a boundary to say, okay, we're finished special time now. You know, what do you want to do? What happens if they're like, no, yes, and they're loving yeah, yeah, special yeah. Special time yeah, and they yeah. want more, I'm yeah. jumping on the trampoline. Totally. So the reason why we do so set a timer is often what can happen is when we set a boundary, um, because you've had all that beautiful connection together in that time, it can bring up sometimes feelings that may be sitting there for kids. That's right. So when you set that that timer, it acts as what we call a loving limit. And what that loving limit is, is, is a space for the kids to push up against and go, no, I want more special time. And that's where you can have that boundary to say, I know you do, sweetie, but we're going to finish now, but you can tell me how you feel about it. And, and for nice. all kids, there's often an accumulation of feelings that yeah. grew throughout the day, and there's an opportunity for them to have a cry, a cuddle in your arms, and mm. just allow themselves to de-stress from what they're actually holding as well. What's coming up for me uh, is it's really important to have integrity around this. So if you promise your kids special time, mm. no matter how old they are, mm. and you fob them up mm. off because you've got... Mm -hmm. something to do mm -hmm. that's going to have a pretty significant yes. impact yes. on them feeling like they matter mm -hmm. they're a priority and they're important and then mm -hmm. if you're in special time or present mm -hmm. time and you're not present mm -hmm. it's just going to be a cascade yep. effect yep. one of the questions we had from someone uh before this uh when we said you were coming on was how do i give my kids quality time without spoiling them i want to ask that now because i think it's relevant to this piece we're in so mm -hmm. how how do we give Yes. Because when we are cracking the parent guilt whip mm -hmm. and not waving the compassion wand, mm -hmm. we overcompensate. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes, let's go to the big thing parts yes. and the play centers yes. and buy all the technology and the yes. gadgets and the yeah. rah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we feel bad. Yeah, so I think the thing is that if we 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 give lots of material stuff, then that will appease our guilt, right? So firstly, start with, okay, let's remove that guilt, like we talked about earlier. And I think kids don't need stuff; they need us. And yeah. so it's really about the presence. So half an hour of connected, you know, special time together is way more important than all the things. Right? Mm. And if you asked any child, that's actually what they really want at the end of the day. So I think it is about. I often say to parents try it out for two weeks right try out the idea of special time for two weeks just and it can be you know once every three days if you want but the research actually says that special time with a child half an hour a week can shift a child's behavior right? wow. so that's a week now right? imagine if you're watching this how much parenting guilt whipping are you doing because of what you're not doing on a daily basis which I definitely have been known to do for myself yeah, yeah. so half an hour of sp and is it something that you like because they say the key to happiness is progress and when and when we have something to look forward to that really fuels our lives mm -hmm. so is it something that you plan or is it about oh we're going to do can, it now I think sometimes if your child's old enough it's good to plan it it yeah. gives them some and you could say to them in the morning when you're dropping them off hey let's do special time this afternoon yeah um you think about what you want to do for that half an hour and the child will think about it and and look if you have more than one child it's about mm. taking turns you know and swapping parents if you can yeah and even for parents who have their kids half the time you know and special time super important when you get mm. your kids back it's so much is about how you respond to your child in the moment that builds connection that helps uh, a child feel ah oh, mum or dad has got me they okay see me. another question on this Sometimes I've seen parents, and I've done this for myself as well, especially for older kids, mm. when we haven't had time and there's, you, you're being present for them and their feelings, mm. how much do you share what's there for you, mm. like mm. as a parent? Mm. I know this could be a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's a good question. So if, that, yeah. if they're older, right, yeah. how much do you share of yeah. like, what's there for you? Okay, so I really do believe that our kids are not responsible for our feelings at all. I think Say that again. Our no, kids are not <laughs> responsible for our feelings at all, right? Our job as the parent is to be the calm anchor for them to navigate life, you know, and our job and responsibility is to take care of our needs so that we can turn up and be the calmest, most anchored version of ourselves as possible. Yeah. So I, I feel that if there's big feelings that brew for you, you need to take them somewhere else. You need to take them to a listening partner, a counsellor, therapist, where you 
you get to work through your own story. Yeah. Um, Our kids are not your therapist. Yeah, t- totally, totally. they got enough yeah. And story. then they feel responsible for your feelings and then that becomes all a bit of a mess, right? So, um, you know, our, we want our children to know that you are the parent, you know, and they don't have to take on that role. So I find that in the older years, you know, when your kids are, are teenagers and there is more of those elements where you can share more openly, it can be as simple as, oh, this makes me feel this, but I'm responsible for it, yeah. not you. What yeah. you're doing is triggering something in me, but I am responsible for it. Yeah. Because our kids, you know, they don't do stuff to us. They are just being the best version of themselves possible. And whatever we feel reactive to is our story. So mm-hmm. it's it doesn't build connection when you go, you make me so no, angry, you make me this. And yeah. it's, a, it's a common thing that yes. people can do yeah. unconsciously. Yes. Yes, yes, so, yes. So just re- just recap the top three things. So you think the, the best philosophy around parenting is the foundation of connection. Yes. The parents need to be a really present anchor and, and have this philosophy that kids are a barometer of whether we're connected or not. Yep. Research shows we really only need, not that this is all you're going to do, yep. but half an hour a week really yep. builds some yep. glue. Yep. And just review the top three things yep. before we go. We'll, we'll just throw open to a yep. few live questions yep. and I have got some other questions yep. as well. So I think the thing is presence. So when you are with your child, being really present with them, not doing the juggle of the phone calls and those kind of stuff. So being present if possible. The second thing is listening. So listening and welcoming all feelings, uh, listening without fixing, listening mm. with just empathy and compassion and the third thing is is creating special time or building that present time into your day now that can also be 15 minutes in the morning Mm. before you get out the door right that could be jumping into bed with your little one and having thumb wrestles it could be just playful stuff that is around laughter connection softness because that is just it fills up a child's cup helps them transition onto the next stuff and also Mm. when you've been separated from the day when you come back together again it, it helps you reconnect so you know for me it's not about how much time we spend with our kids it's about the quality of the time that we spend with them and all children and again all the people I've worked with over all these years say exactly the same thing what I deeply needed from my parent was to feel seen and to feel heard yeah right so that comes back to those things that we're talking about here that's for most of us our own wounds from our childhood comes back to those same things again so Mm. we actually can do that for our children and it doesn't have to be hard and it's a gift for us as well totally when we're present Mm-hmm. listening yeah. and having special time. And I know for mm-hmm. a lot of you that are in real estate, you do long hours and long days. And, um, you know, a thought that came to mind before, if it works for you and your family is rather than real estate or your business be this thing that you do separately, could there be some activity where your kids help you? Mm-hmm. Like could they help you get the boards out of the morning or could they help you prepare the packs mm-hmm. the night before? So they're part of the activity that needs to happen and, and they're in your world rather than mum or dad does this thing out here and I never see them Mm. and don't underestimate you know it's such a beautiful thing for me is when my girls were young so I have a 17 and a 15 year old and when they were really young little babies even I'd put fresh lavender oil on my hands and rub it in their pillow and I'd have music playing and make their bedrooms a beautiful sensory experience especially for sleep time now if they're at school and I've gone and I've had the idea and I'll go and put lavender on their pillows Mm -hmm. they come home and they're like oh (laughs) mama you know Or pancake sundaes or just the little family traditions. So we have gone to half an hour, but I want to just see if uh, in the next five minutes, if you have a particular question around... Uh, first of all, can we give some love to Leo for unpacking those top three things? If you've got something for yourself, thumbs up, emoji or something. If you are watching this live, please type in live or if you're watching the record, do us a flavour and type in record just so when we, we know when this message getting is getting to you. And I'd love to hear if you were to adopt one of the three things, is it presence? Is it listening? There's a whole lot of green love. Is it presence? Is it listening or is it special time? Because Layla and I were talking when we were off air uh, and I said, I just really want to give us all access to something, one thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can just introduce one thing, what would it be? Is it Mm -hmm. presence? Mm -hmm. Is it listening? Mm -hmm. Or is it special time? Now, all three is the recipe for connected Mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. But if you can just focus on one at a time and maybe Mm -hmm. next week integrate the next things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oops, lice. Well, you know, (laughs) when we deal with kids, there's often lice as well. (laughs) Presence, uh, put the damn phone down says Emily you know there is research I was going to get my phone but it's here there's research that shows 
I thought I was good in me, you know, in meetings or whatever, having my phone upside down. Mm. If you have the phone in your vicinity, mm. no matter who you're with, mm. the other person will mm. think that device and what's mm. on the other side of that is more important than them. Yes. You know, we said before that quote, this moment is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Mm. And I believe that when we make the other person feel like the center of the universe, mm. when they're in our presence, what mm. better gift? Mm. So what's the thing for you? Listening, mm. Mm. presence, mm. or special time, or, or mm. that you know present time with your teenagers. And I also, I, I think I would love to say, you know, you have to go gently. Like yeah. we, we are all. And I, I, look, my my foundation of all my work is compassion for people because I know everybody's doing the best job yeah. they know how, right? I just know that we are all doing the hustle on some level. Mm. So we have to be start with with the kindness for ourselves. And even if we start with one thing, and I just say, just see what happens if you could start with one thing mm -hmm. of just a bit of special time see how your child is after right yeah. see how they their behavior is see if it feels warmer softer softer you know more loving together just yeah. by doing that so the the proof is really in how your children behave and how your relationship feels yeah you know? so i think you know use a have a bit of an experiment and see how that feels mm. Mm. and it's a practice, mm. right? Some days we're going to get it really right and we'll yeah. go to bed going, oh, I was a fabulous parent today. And then tomorrow, yeah. boom, Snapdragon comes out and it's unconscious. Yeah. And so here's my, I, I'm no parent expert. I, I'm, you know, uh, utilize Lael's knowledge and skill to help me navigate these tricky teen years that are teaching me a lot. However, uh, here's what I definitely practice for myself is is compassion. And I also clean up. If I make a mess, mm, I clean up. Yeah. My, my kids have the... Um, the ability to call me if I'm not present. They'll say, Mum, you're not present. And I'm like, Yeah, you're right. So yes. I've given them permission to tell me if I'm not present. Yes. And I'll also clean up if I've broken my promise. Yes. Uh, I promise if you step over this stuff, mm. they know it and they feel it yep. and they don't feel ma they're like they matter and they're important and they mm. see you great with clients. Yes. That's yes. just inauthentic. Yeah. So yep. it's okay. We're yep. going to stuff up. We're going to make mistakes. Yep. But the key is to own it, yes. acknowledge it, and do it specific and timely. Mm. Yep. Hey, mm. Kaya, I'm really sorry mm. I wasn't present with you just mm. then you were sharing something really big and I, mm. I was not available let me just control yes. off delete and yes. do that again <laughs> the, the repair factor is huge and I often say look we're going to make mistakes we are going to yell sometimes we're going to react in ways that aren't mm. around connection and what is a really important learning tool is is modeling to your kids I'm so sorry the repairing because that actually teaches them about their ability to then yeah. repair it actually acknowledges that you're not perfect you know that you get stuff wrong which gives them permission to get things wrong as yes, well so yes, yes. there's as much juice in the repair as there is yeah. in the, the the beautiful parenting that we want to do so yeah. none of it's lost right and I think what you brought up is such a good point we have to own when we're not sticking to our word or not doing what we need to do because kids are just they're so clear in in knowing where we're at they know, are and we have to listen to that what's mm -hmm. Emily saying here my kids have learned to communicate really well so they often want to sit down and talk uh, of they don't feel like I'm keeping promises this is a good thing yes yeah, well we just crazy. said yeah Emily's like yeah she got it yes yeah. Uh, so, yeah. look, I so would love to spend the next half an hour, but we both have got clients to see and I've yeah. got kids to be present with before they head off to school. Yes. Thank you so oh, much for pleasure. coming Thanks in. For having me. Now, Lael, uh, so, so first of all, again, give Lael some love. Mm. And uh, if you would like more of this content, mm. would you love Lael back? Uh, I know one of the questions we received early on, I knew this half an hour would go really quickly, is, you know, how do I build connection with my kids and uh, with social media as well? And how do I, like, social media is a massive one. So mm. if you want some content around that mm. or, uh, you know, just to keep unpacking these gifts. Thanks, Emily. There's a whole lot of love thanks Jason great to have you here with a thumbs up mm -hmm. so if you would love more tips on how to, mm -hmm. to build compassion for yourself and connection with your children and your families mm -hmm. let me know and and I'm sure mm -hmm. Layla you, you mm -hmm. come back I'll totally come back now you have a podcast yes yes if you want more information about all of this we have a podcast called the aware parenting podcast uh, and it covers all these topics right. around parenting around connection listening feelings emotions you know when kids say no all the stuff that we navigate as parents so um you know that that you can find it on all the kind of 
places that you so listen to podcasts. So it's the Aware Parenting, Aware Parenting podcast. podcast. Spotify? Yes, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, all the, all the places. Great. And yes. what day is that on? Um, we usually launch, well, we launch in random times, but usually we do one once a week. <laughs> once Again, a week. we work around our kids. Yeah, so yeah. Usually once a week you can you can find us there. Great. Yeah. So the Aware Parenting podcast, love mm. it. So great mm. tips uh, from Layla and you've got a... a uh, Marion, yes. Okay, yeah. great. And if I dig you and I want to learn more about you mm. and your... Okay, so Layla, also this weekend mm. in St. Andrews. Is it St. Yeah, Andrews? St. Andrews up in the hills. We have a workshop on Aware Parenting Tweens and Teens. So there's Ooh. still a few tickets left. And that really is about navigating the tween and teen years around sexuality, social media, feelings and emotions, hormones, growth, all that kind of stuff. So we've got a few tickets left on that. Big and topic. You can, yeah, you can find me on Facebook. It's got all our event details. There. So what's your Facebook handle? Uh, just Lael Stone. And your website? Uh, is laylestone.com.au. <laughs> and, and our school? Yes. Is, um, our school is woodlineprimary.com.au if anyone's in interested yeah, in that. Awesome. Mm. Lael, thank you for working for the kids yes. <laughs> and giving us parents rafts to build compassion for ourselves because we are all trying to mm. do our best and that would be the thing that I'd love you to take away with. If you are a parent mm. or, or you're working with others, have compassion for yourself. Have that definition that you're doing the best with what you have and then you'll do better when you know better. So hopefully we all know a little better after today. Mm. And uh, please, thanks, Sarah. Please give us a heads up if you'd love Lael to come back again, you know, in a month or so. And if there's a particular topic that you dig, of course, remember that Mindset Mastery Monday is free peak performance coaching for you to have access to really live and build a life that you love. So no topic, uh, topic, <laughs> to uh, teeth back in. No topic is off hands. If you want to uh, have a question answered send it, DM it, let me know. And remember, we'll be back 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Friday for Rapid Fire Friday, where I just reflect on the top coaching themes for the week and just share some Rapid Fire tips to give you a raft to succeed and be happy mm. and fulfilled. So thank you. I love you. She's a good woman. She's the real, egg, real deal and a great egg. And I really invite you to check out her work, sign up and listen to the Aware Parenting podcast and let us know if you want Lael back. Thanks. We'd love to have you back. Have a beautiful day and remember, as always, in the words of the late, great Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Make yourself and those around you feel great today. Uh, apologies for not being able to respond to all of these messages because uh, we've gone a bit over time, but we really hope it was valuable. Check out Lael, laelstone.com.au and the Aware Parenting Podcast. Mwah. Have a great week. Okay, so we end now. And that arrow, we'll save it. Amazing. And we're still live on Facebook. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, friends.